preacher tonight. Praise God. God bless you, Brother Phillips. Come take your liberty. Come on, let's give it unto the Lord. Living for Jesus is exciting. It's the most exciting thing that has ever happened to man. And the next exciting thing is that we got to figure out what's most exciting. Living for God is like opening up a box of Cracker Jacks. There's a prize in every box. There's a prize every day. I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord tonight. I want to go to the book of Acts, the fourth chapter. You know, I thank God for praying women. Our ladies have prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And the elder at the church where, where we attend our home church, she passed in her 90s and she said, Brother Phillips, when I got the Holy Ghost, my husband made me ride on the back of the truck. Rain, sleet, snow, didn't matter. I had to ride in the back of the truck. And she said, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed until God filled my husband with the Holy Ghost. And then God called him to preach. And see, there, there was something that happens. And there's something that we take for granted. Every day that I get to get up and I get to open my eyes, it's another opportunity that I get to sit down and just sup with the Lord. It's another day that I get to sit down and just visit with God in prayer. Acts 4, verse 31. And when they prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. And when they prayed, I want to talk to us a little while about they prayed. Let's give them a hand clap of praise right as you're being seated. Thank you. If we can begin to understand the power that is in prayer and the power that there is in just getting down to business with God and just burying our head in the carpet and just crying out to God, not until we get a chill bump, but, but until we know that God, uh, that God has heard us and we are broke through the heavenlies. Prayer is not just a one-way streak. It is a two-way streak. It is a talking and a listening. And prayer is the soul's sincere desire uttered or expressed, the motion of a hidden fire that trembles in the heart. Prayer is the prayer, prayer is the shackles. Prayer shackles the enemy to his own uh, to his own devices. That is what prayer does. But if we don't pray, no miracles is gonna take place. You wouldn't be here. Some of you wouldn't be in the house of God had not some elder has laid on their face and cried out to God. Time is something that you never get back. You can always make more money. You can always get another vehicle. You can always get another house, but you never get back time. And time is a sacrifice. Whenever you come to prayer, it is a sacrifice. Come on, God is going to meet you there in that sacrifice. He's not going to let you go on. Hey, he ain't going to let it go unnoticed. He's going to meet you in prayer. He's going to meet you in that closet. He's going to meet you in that place. They prayed and God shook the house. Ian Bounds prayed as if the universe was his zone. He was in a place and he prayed until... The heavens begin to open in a way that he never seen God. Stay with me, okay? When we had our motor home many, many years, many years ago, we was about three o'clock in the morning. I sat up and I just started screaming in prayer. My wife said, "Hey, hey, God, God ain't deaf." 
And I said, honey, today he is. There are times that God wants to know how bad that you want to be in his presence. We, we come in from a road trip from preaching somewhere and we stepped into her home and this spirit had trailed us home and, and this thing said, I'm going to kill you. And I made mention of it and I said, good. So I got up the next morning. The Lord woke me up early, but about two and a half hours of sleep. And, and then he said, get up and pray. I want to talk to you. In one hour of prayer, there was no voice. In two hours of prayer, there was no voice. Four and a half hours later, finally, there was a voice. And I said, God, why did you wait so long? He said, because I had to get you out of the way. Prayer gets you out of the way, and it gets it's Jesus in the way. We say we pray, but we patty cake around it. Come on, men. Let me tell you men something. Hey, look, it ain't your pastor's job to come to your house and fight your battles. Come on, you better get, hey, you better get on your warring armor. Hey, it's time that we go to battle. Come on, men. Hey, I know our ladies that carry the church. I need some praying men. I don't know about you. Hey, we need some men who is ready to get into a good fight. You ain't going to sit down unless somebody come kick in the door and come in your house. I don't think so. Uh-uh. Nada. It ain't happening. I've got some reasons in my closet you ain't coming in. I'll let you figure it out. Come on, I'm just a little bit country, but I'm not stupid, okay? When are we going to come back to a place and pray? Our elders prayed. When they was in a Brush Harbor meeting, they, they would pray, and they would throw eggs at them. They would shoot at them, but yet they still prayed. Come on, they didn't quit. They didn't let adversity stop them. They, they wanted a move of God. They wanted God, God to shake their community. You know, preacher, prayer is exhausting. Really? So is eating. Look, we eat crawfish until I got tired. It's easy to go to the buffet, but it's hard to come kneel down in an altar. See, there is something about the altar. It is going to confront you in what you're doing. The, uh, the altar is going to confront everything ab about you. It's going to say, hey, when are you going to give me that sin you're dealing with? When are you going to give me that, uh, that thing you've been, ra you've been wrestling with? If we don't pray, we ain't going to make it. If we don't cry out to God, I don't care how intellectual you are, it don't matter how illiterate you are, there is something about prayer, honey. It is a language that Jesus, he understands. You want him, you got to talk to him. You need him, you got to call on him. Whenever the baby's sick and there is no doctor on duty, hey, come on, you got to pray. When there's no money in the bank, come on, honey, you got to pray. You got to learn to get a hold of God. Maybe you've never wrestled all, all night in prayer. I've wrestled all night in prayer and drove all day. Here is the reason why that this spirit is plaguing some of our homes and is trying to squeeze us out. It is because that we come to the house of God and we shout and we worship and we go home to a sanctuary to where there is no prayer. Come on, amen, oh me. I didn't bring revival in a bag, honey. It's already in you. You've got to stir it up. 
Hey, men, I know our women that's got up and prayed. I know our women that's taught babies. Hey, man, when are you going to get up and pray? When are you going to get up and wake your household up and pray? Come on, men. I need some men who is ready to go fight. This offends you, just go ahead and just, and just throw a rock at me. God didn't call some limp wristed sissies in this battle. He called some men who was getting ready to pray. He called some men who knew how to touch God. He called some men who were ready to get into the place of prayer. One thing I can't stand, I can't stand somebody that whines. Well, praise God. We want somebody to preach us pretty. We want somebody to preach something to us that we can go home and chew on for weeks. But when are we going to get down to business with God and let's get on our face and God gives us something that, we are di uh, that we're digging in the word for years. If we don't pray, we are not going to see the, mag the magnitude of, uh, of that breakthrough that God has put in us and that he has promised us. If we don't pray, we are going to miss the very presence of God. And if we don't pray, every time that we are coming into the house of God, there is somebody that, uh, that is watching you and everything and in your attitude affects everything around you. That is why I've got to keep myself in prayer. If I don't pray, honey, I get an attitude quick. I'm sorry, we, we, we got to text and we got to get on Facebook and, and then we got to do all this stuff. In Joshua chapter 10 and verse 12, then, then spake Joshua to the Lord in, in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, son, stand still upon, uh, upon Gibeon. And thou moon in the valley of Agilon. And the sun stood still. Verse 14, and there was no day like that day or, or after it that the Lord, oh, come on, the Holy Ghost is moving. There is a spirit here. You, uh, you hear this microphone cracking? Come on, folks. Come on, stay with me. Come on, stay with me. There is a spirit in this city, and it's rocking some of us to sleep, and it's doing a good job. Come on, it's time. Come on, men. If you're a daddy and if you're a husband, stand on your feet. I don't want the women st standing up. And if you're a single man, stand on your feet. Come on. If I was a woman, I wouldn't be looking for somebody who was afraid to pray. Come on, folks. Hey, we're going to have a breakthrough. There are people in this city, men. They are watching you. Hey, it's time you win the battle when you're home, man. Come on, man. It is not your pastor's job to go and correct your children. Come on, man. It ain't his job to teach them to worship. It's your job. Joshua stepped into the breach with prayer. Victory comes through prayer. Let it crackle. We'll be all right. How many elders in here that we have that are 65 and older? Stand to your feet, please. I want to show you something, men. Come on, young men. I want you to look around you. Come, come on, look around you. Come on, look around you. Come on, I get a real good look. 
You know why? Because the, these are some of the people that has weathered out some storms, young man. They have prayed and they fought battles and they warred and they dug right into the things of God and they did not give up. That is why they are still living for God. These are the type men and women they are going to point their fingers at, uh, at us one day whenever we say, you know what, God, it was too hard. I don't think so. Come on, we got to pray. Whenever you live for God hard, it's easy. Whenever you live for God easy, it's hard. You can't live for him easy. Come on, honey. You got to dive in this. You got to get a hold of God. When are we going to pray, man? We want somebody to come in and pat us on our shoulder and tell us that we're doing a good job. Why, what about when your son is laying there and he's dead and he's gurgling in blood and, and, and there's nobody else there? You've got to hey, you got to man up and pray. Well, preacher, I work 16 hours a day. Excuse me, I've been there. When is the last time? That God has woke you up at 3 o'clock in the morning and you didn't lay down to 12 o'clock at night. When is the last time that you laid on your face and you cried out to God until the fever broke from your child? When is the last time that you laid on your face and prayed right until God, he met the need? I'm sorry, I got a pose for Facebook. When is our purpose going to be greater than our excuse? When is our purpose in prayer is going to be greater than every distraction that is coming against us? That is why some of us, we are fighting so rough in our mind. It is because we are trying to balance the things of the world, and we are trying to balance it with, uh, with the church, and it's not going to balance. Come on, it's not going to balance. There is something that is going to outweigh everything that, uh, that you're going through, and his name is Jesus. I don't know about you, but I must have him. I don't know what tomorrow is going to hold. I don't know what tonight is going to hold. That is why I must pray. That is why I must live for him in holiness and righteousness. Come on, I got to pray. I mean, hey, I don't have to understand what, what's going on. I just need to pray. Second Chronicles 5 and verse 11, and it came to pass when the priest come out of the holy place, somebody was in a place praying. For all the priests that, that were present were sanctified and did not then wait by course. Also the Levites, which were the singers, all of them of Asaph, of Heman, and of Jebuthun, with their sons be, uh, being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and psalteries and hearts, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them a hundred and twenty priests sat sounding trumpets. And it came to pass as trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments and music and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever, that then, then, Somebody was in a secret place with God. Somebody was praying. Somebody was crying out to God. I love the worship. Hey, I love to dance. I love the worship. Hey, look, this old fat boy here, I like to do it, but I love to talk to God in prayer. Come on, I want to visit with him. I want to sup with him. I want to invite him in. So that the priest could not stand the minister but by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. We got time for everything else. Preacher, I got to make money. I do understand that, and so does God. But when are we going to take time for God? 
I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow always comes tomorrow. Tomorrow always comes tomorrow. And it never becomes today. And then the next thing you know, whenever you push him right on out of the way, uh, 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 tomorrow uh, it gets easier. And then the next day it gets easier. And then the next day it gets easier. And then there's no more conviction. I got to pray. See, maybe he don't talk to you the way that he does me, okay? He gets very stern with me. I've had God to jerk me around and say, let me tell you something. This is my kingdom. It is not yours. I will take you out now. Laying in my motorhome one night, I told my wife, I said, my God, something bit me on the foot. And I sat up and I looked and nothing. And then I laid back down and, ju and just a few minutes later, it touched me on the next foot. And when I sat up, I seen the angel. He, he was doing this. He said, why didn't you obey my voice tonight? I said, God, I was afraid. He said, do, do you know that I can kill you right now? Come on, folks, when are we going to come to a place that is either life or death? Living for God is life and death. Come on, man, when are you going to man up and pray? You are standing between your children going into the things of the world. <laughs> My kids won't do that. I'm sorry, you better not say that. And we allow things to push us in a corner because we want to stand in a corner and we want to watch everybody else and we want to suck on our problems and we want to suck on our thumb, th th thumb and pooch our lips out. I'm sorry. Get into the rain. You know when it's time to get wet when it's raining? Somewhere you got to make up your mind. God, today, I'm not going to sit back anymore. Today, God, I am pushing through. I need a breakthrough in my home. I need a breakthrough in my mind. I need a breakthrough in my spirit tonight, God. And I'm not going to quit until I reach it. Maybe you wasn't raised with, uh, with a diesel mechanic who, uh, who could clear his voice and it could echo over 10,000 people. Maybe you wasn't raised in a broken home. Maybe you got to pray a, a, a praying mom and daddy to where that everything is good. Let me tell you something. If their voice is taken out of your life, what then? Let me put you on notice. God don't have no grandkids. One man said, Brother Phillips, I'm a fifth generation Pentecost. I said, so? I said, I used to raise dogs. He said, what does that mean? I said, ever so many generations, you get a dumb dog. Ever so many generations, we get those who quit praying. We get those who quit living in holiness and righteousness. Come on, ever so many generations, we get somebody who wants to get up in a program instead of creating an atmosphere of prayer. I've never seen 3,000 and 5,000 in one day, but I'm going to see it. Come on, I don't know about you. I want to see them added to the church. I want to see them filled with the Holy Ghost. I want to see them coming out of the wheelchair and their eyes open and arms and legs growing back, growing back again. It's going to happen in prayer. We was deer hunting in Kansas, and Daddy said, and a Jacob said, my God, Dad, why, why are you getting up early? I said, I want to pray. You know, uh, Daddy, you, uh, uh, you're going to be sitting in the deer stand. Wait a minute. David said early. I believe, I believe when we get to heaven, 
that there's going to be angels come up and go say, hey, hey, do you remember? When you was down on your luck and you was about to give up and you prayed one prayer and God sent me and I come to bring that word to you. The angels desire to look into this, but they have no choice. They have to worship him. <coughs> I have a choice. I can either get into the presence of God for myself or I can miss him for myself. Maybe you've never been to a place. Maybe your bank account's full. Maybe everything is good going your way. But I don't know about you. I don't care how full it gets. I still got to pray. Come on, I still need to. Let me tell you something. I stepped out on the evangelist field with, with, three, with three children. There were times that we would go to Sam's and eat the samples because I didn't have money to buy food. Well, preacher, I come from this kind of background. I don't want to hear your junk. How much do you love him? I got up of a morning and prayed till my eyes looked like an Alabama road map, till they were so bloodshot. And prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. sitting in a service one night get, uh, getting ready to preach pastor and I seen a prayer wheel and this thing it rolled into the sanctuary and it was rolling and the voice out of it said pray I was going through something one time and I was in the men's prayer room in Mars Chapel Tennessee my God we was dealing with stuff and we was dealing with devils and we was dealing with spirits and I said Lord what in the world is going on Sister Smith, I stood behind the throne of a man. He had hair like wool and eyes like fire. And his voice said, it's going to be okay. And I, hey, it broke that night. Come on, folks. When are we going to pray? Are we hungry enough for God to push back our plate and lay on our face and cry out to God until... <coughs> Preacher, you don't understand. I'm not a very emotional guy. I'm sorry. You let somebody go and take their foot and put it in your uh, put it in your car door. You uh, you uh, you gonna get emotional? Give me your credit card and just let me go to Bass Pro. You gonna get emotional? We choose what we want. They prayed. Come on, they prayed. You know how you can tell when people's not praying? Pastor, I got a problem. Pa uh, Pastor, I got a problem. Pastor, I got a problem. Pa Pastor, I got a problem. That's how you can tell when people's not praying. I've watched drunks come in service and leave sober full of the Holy Ghost. We need hands on it. A lady one night and she hit the floor. She was a walking dead woman. She was gray. Her tongue was gray. She was almost as gray as my pants, I promise you. The Holy Ghost said, I'm going to heal cancer today. I said, God, this is your day. You do what you want. <clears throat> we laid hands on her. She went, flop. Well, God, she's dead. She said, oh, my God. I don't hurt no more. She got up. Her color was as good as mine and yours. But it only happens in prayer. 
we are missing a principle with God. It's called a relationship. If I never talked to my wife, if I walked in the house one day and said, fix me some tea. Oh, Jesus, I'm going to wear it. But if I eased in and said, honey, I sure do love you, and some of that tea sure would be good. I know there are times that we come boldly before the throne of grace, but when are we going to ease in and tell him just how beautiful he is and tell him just how great he is and how mighty his name is? I know what it's like to be in a liquor bottle. I know what it's like to be high on pot. Come on, I done been there. I know what it's like to be all toked out, but I also know what it's like to be drunk right in the presence of God until I couldn't even stand up. We prayed for so many people one night, honey. I couldn't walk. I was so drunk. I was giddy. I was laughing. But we prayed. But we prayed, but we prayed, but we prayed. There was a spirit over this city, and, it, and it's almost, it, it is this old python situation. And every time that you exhale, it wants to squeeze on you. But every time that you go to prayer, and that coal of fire, and that fire of the Holy Ghost, and it starts building in you, and this thing loosens. You know why? You are creating an atmosphere that fire can burn anything that is holding you captive. But it's in prayer. That is where it's set. It is not on the outside of God. It is not on the outside right of his house. It is in the house of God in prayer. When is the last time you have sanctified your house and, and you saturated it with prayer? Psalms 149 and verse 6. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind the kings with chains and the nobles with fetters. Somebody prayed. Somebody prayed. Somebody prayed. Well, preacher, I'm tired. I'm sorry. I was in a grain bin one night. We scooped 42,000 pounds of soybeans with a corn scoop. Dirty, stunk to high heaven. My wife said, what are we doing? I said, we're going to church, get the babies ready. Walked in the door, never had time to take a bath. Honey, you stink. I don't care. They just gonna have to make room. I'm going to church. When you get hungry enough, see, when you really get hungry enough, nothing else matters. When God has delivered you from something and you know the voice of that thing that God has delivered you from, it is on the outside of the house screaming at you. You are one step away from letting me right back in. I don't think so. Hey, I'm one prayer away from glory. I'm one prayer away from seeing a miracle. I'm one prayer away of seeing my family delivered. I'm one prayer away of stepping into God and seeing something that I've never seen. Jeremiah 29 and 13, and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. See, we want somebody to pat us on the back. Man, you're doing a good job. I'm sorry. My dad was a drill sergeant in the 50s when he went in service. When he come off the farm in Kibbe, Georgia, he, he could hold a 100-pound anvil out straight with each hand. He was much of a man.
I used to take a 25 pound bag, I mean a 100 pound bag of corn and pitch it a long ways, a good ways. I thought I was in good shape until I entered into the anointing. This thing about you. When is the last time that you walked through a store and somebody said, just the wind that when you pass by them and the wind from your body had touched them and their headache was gone, their eyes cleared up. We was in a service in Regan, Tennessee, and nine men j uh, jumped up and they run, uh, run around the church in a time of worship. And when the ninth man, there was a lady that had problems with migraines, and she said, Brother Phillips, I have wrestled with this thing all day. It's been gnawing, and it's been building. They just don't go away right at the snap of your fingers. And when the ninth man had come by, the wind that went over her head, there was nine miracles that took place in that service service. Nobody was laying hands on nobody. Nobody was praying for anybody. We was just worshiping the Lord. But somewhere we have been in a place of prayer. It's not going to happen just sitting on the pew. It's not going to happen coming in and going home the same way that we came in. It's not going to take place that way. It is going to take place in a closet shut up with God. It is going to take place in that secret place with God and crying out to God for hours. God, I need you today, Lord. I'm facing something today, oh God, that I've never faced before. I need you today, God. I need you to breathe on me and cancers can dry up the snap of a finger and eyes can clear up at the snap of a finger why because somebody has been in the presence of the Lord We wait for somebody to jump up and shout, and we wait for the first one to dance whenever our, whenever our heart's about to beat slam out of our chest, and God is going, get up, get up and run, get up and run, get up and run. I'm going to create a fire. Get, uh, get up and run. Prayer starts with one. Brother C.B. Wiley. And Gonzalez, Louisiana was standing in a foxhole and there were shells from World War II. They were filling up the foxhole. And this man looked at him. He said, CB, do, uh, do, uh, do you know how to pray? He said, I used to. He, he said, I think it's time that you learn how again or, or we're going home in a body bag. They prayed. Our elders prayed. I learned to pray in a woman's prayer meeting. My mother-in-law would say, come on, boy, let's go. I've watched demons cat being cast out in a bookstore. Preacher, we don't have time. Sorry. When's the last time that you bombarded heaven to such a point that hell looks up and said, Jesus, I know, and Keith, I know, but who are you? If you're a daddy, stand to your feet. I want you to look at your children. I want you to take a real good look at them. Are you going to let the world come in and take them? Or are you going to let them get into the same things that, uh, that you got into before you got into the house of God? I don't think so. It's that man's job to, the pre uh, to preach to you, but it's your job to, te uh, to teach your family how to worship. Hello, someone. Come on, did you hear me? When is the last time that you broke through and led, and led your family in the worship? Come on, man. 
Come on, man. It's time to man up. Take a look at your children again. If you was looking at them right over a casket and you had a chance to change their life and and you didn't, but, uh, but you kept your mouth shut in prayer and yet you had a chance to open your mouth and cry out to God and see them delivered and you didn't, but now they're laying in a casket, what then? This ain't got serious, ain't it? See, there are spirits in this city. They, uh, uh, the reason why that some cannot get to you, they are going to your wife. Let me show you. Stay with me, man. I want to show you how the enemy works. The, uh, this is how he works. When he comes at the pastor and then... Excuse me. When he can't get to the pastor, he goes to his wife. When he can't get her, he goes to his children. When he can't get to children, he comes to you. If we don't pray, I've got grandchildren that are watching every move I make, brother. I got grandchildren that are saying, Papa, can I come pray with you? Come on. This is so serious. If your kids were suited up in camouflage and they was in a foreign country fighting a battle, you would be on your face every day crying out to God. I give my nephew a prayer. A, a prayer cloth, and he went to Iraq. He got into a dog fight, and Chris is a big boy, weighed about 250, in his shirt. And his shirt was pulled up above the metal. And he said, Uncle Keith, he said, I kept that prayer cloth behind my shield in my chest. That is where I kept it in every uniform. And he said, I was laying down. I'm talking about a dude can bench press almost 600 pounds. Come on, folks. He, he's a big boy. He's not scared of nothing. And, Pastor, he was laying behind that piece of metal. And bullets couldn't come through the metal. And his shirt was up. Whenever the dog fight stopped and he stood up, he had bullet holes in his shirt. Come on, folks. If we don't pray, they shook the house and they shook the countryside. They, they shook every place they went in prayer. Come on, in prayer, in prayer. Thank God for praying mamas. Thank God for praying grandmamas. But what about some praying daddies? Come on, what about some praying granddaddies? Come on, it's time we teach them to pray. It ain't time to get slack. It ain't time to get quiet. It's time we fight this battle. Mark 11 and verse 24, therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things, so ever ye, ye desire when you pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. What are we praying? Don't believe it. What are we praying? Don't believe it. Atmosphere. Come on, the atmosphere. There's a shift in the atmosphere in this place. I can feel it. My angel just stepped into the building. Come on, folks. I'm not crazy. Come on, he's here. I can feel the fire. There's another angel in the center of this building. Come on, he's here. Been on my face about all day. Come on, folks. I didn't bring it in the bag. It's in you. See, prayer is work when you put your heart into it. Fred Gill, his son drowned. They got him out of the water, took him to a lady's house, and he said, Brother Phillips, you talking about laying everything out on the table. He taught Bible college in Memphis, Tennessee, when a Bible school was in Memphis. He was in his 80s when I met him. And he said, for an hour, 
In 45 minutes, I laid everything out on the table with God. And I said, God, I don't want him. I don't want a vegetable. I don't want him in a wheelchair. I don't want him blind. I want him whole. And he said, little did I know it, the whole time I was praying, water was coming out of his mouth. And he sneezed an hour and 45 minutes later. And God raised him up. God can do anything, but he cannot do anything for somebody who don't want pray. Somebody come to the music place. They shook the house. They shook the place. Acts 16, verse 25. Spirit followed Paul. Oh, these men are the men of the Most High God, showing us the way into salvation. Paul being grieved in his spirit. Hello, Jesus. Thank you. Put it on the board for me, please. Acts 16, verse 25. And at midnight being whipped, being whipped. Come on, go with me. Have you ever been so tired that you couldn't hold your head up? Have you ever been so tired that you couldn't chew clabber or chew water? Have you ever been so tired that you just couldn't hold up your head, but yet there was something on the inside of you going, I got to pray for my kids. I got to pray for my kids. I got to pray for my kids. God, I can't rest. You laid this name in my heart, God. You put this name in my spirit, God, and I cannot go to sleep until I call out this man's name. Oh, God, until I come out. Or until I call out this whole family's name, God. I'm tired, God. I'm wore out, but nevertheless, Lord, I'm going to pray. I'm going to cry out to God tonight, Lord. Somebody needs a miracle, Lord. I cannot get comfortable. When if I read in the word of God and their backs were lacerated, but yet they shackled them to a wall. Verse 26. Here is a game changer. And suddenly, suddenly he shows up so that the foundation of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and every man's bands were loosed. Murderer, thief, adulterer, in the pornography they prayed they prayed there was a lady in Texas that stepped into a jail cell she's a Mexican lady she stepped into that cell and began to pray a woman through the baptism of the Holy Ghost and she said I don't know how to pray we do it this way and she said, whenever we got to praying, the bars begin to shake. I can't sit still, Pastor, every time I read that scripture. Come on. They going to point their fingers at me. They going to point their fingers at you. Isaiah 41 and 17, when the poor and needy seek water and there is none and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. Oh, when things are crazy. Preacher, I come into the house of God with a need.
Do you believe that you can speak to somebody's storm and the storm can stop? Jesus left us an example. I never met the man. I was sitting at the desk praying, finishing up studying. And the Holy Ghost said, you text Brother McCoy. And this is what you tell him. I'm going to tell you something, folks. You got the Holy Ghost. The gifts of the Spirit is in you. My desire for Him must be greater than my desire to live. Paul said, for me to die is gain. If he called on you tonight to pray all night and then get up and go to work, would you do it? Prayer is a universal language that everybody understands. We was in Belize preaching. You know what's hot when them folks say it's hot. Father's Day. It's about 110 degrees that morning. We was preaching. And God was working miracle after miracle. And I watched them people stand in worship and sweat. What are we hungry for? Come on, what are you hungry for? What, what do you want from God? God told Abraham to go to a certain mountain. Abraham, I'm gonna require of you one thing. Them boys is your future. Them boys is your posterity, and they carry on your name. He said, Abraham, I want your future, and I want your identity, and I want it laying on the altar. Oh, God. Oh, God. Abraham said, nevertheless, that's why his boys... His children, you can throw a rock at me if you want to. I'll do more than that he's ever done. That's why my children will do more than Keithy Boy has ever done. You know why? Because God ordained it that way. They prayed. They prayed. If you're a daddy, if you're a granddaddy, I want you to come around this altar. You're a single man that is looking for a wife, a young man. I want you around this altar. I want you to line up. I want your wives and your kids to get behind you and you lead them in prayer. Come on, you lead them in prayer. Could it be that the reason why some of our children is not in the house of God because it is our fault? Because we didn't create the atmosphere. We didn't create the thing for God, for our children to, uh, to pick up and carry on. Come on, man. Man up. Come on, man. Lead them. Come on, man. Don't get quiet now. They are dependent on you to pray. looking for a husband stand up come on if he 
he's not around the altar praying, leave him alone. Come on, man. Man up. In, jo in Joshua's day, it was the men who was at battle. Come on, pray until you pray through. Pray until you break through. This is about you. You're a leader, you're a warrior. You're not a sissy, you're a warrior. Open your mouth. Whatever you're dealing with now, give it to God. Your children, they are watching you. You are setting the pattern for them. They're following your pattern. Build you an altar. Build you an altar, man. Sanctify your house with prayer. Saturate it with prayer. Saturate your home with prayer. Saturate everything that you own with prayer. Saturate your children's room with prayer. We don't have time to play church. Heaven may come tonight. You set the precedent. If your children fail, it's in your hands. Come on, Daddy. Come on, Mama. Encourage your daddy. Come on, encourage your husband. Encourage it. Encourage that man. Encourage that man. Hear it. Build me a house of prayer. Let me be a sanctuary for the Most High God. Let me be a sanctuary of prayer. Let me be that place that Jesus can dwell in. Yeah. 